Yiller, yo. For this video, I wanted to explain a couple of things that I picked up playing Yoshimitsu as I managed to get to Tekken Emperor, and I want to give you some of the advices that I can give to all the Yoshimitsu players that may want to also reach the highest rank that they want to reach as their current goal. So for one, my particular type of playstyle is not party style. It's not really a very aggressive style. Unless I get towards the enemy's face, I'll try to then be more aggressive. But while I'm in the neutral, I tend to play a lot more defensively and passively. Basically trying to wait and see exactly what the opponent might do and test the water, so to speak, to see if they will get caught by said moves that I want to use. So for example, I tend to use my down forward one, my down forward four, my full crouch on forward 4, which is your best low to use, and it's your best keep out tool as well. As you can see, it hits from pretty far away. You'll use your CD2, and even Geho Sin, which is your CD1, but at tip range. Do not use this up close unless you are 100% sure that they'll get caught by the move. For example, I love to use this when I'm up close to the opponent and they think that I'm going to go for my Samurai Cutter. A lot of the times, they'll just think that I'm going to go for it, but I'm going to go for my Geho Sen. Now, Geho Sen, again, CD1, can be done by pressing down forward into your 1 plus 4. Though it's slightly slower than your natural manually used Geho Sen with CD1 by pressing forward, down, down forward, into 1. It's 17 frames on startup, while the other one is 20 frames, so it's slightly slower but it's easier to use against the opponent. So if they end up again attempting to believe that you're gonna go for your Samurai Cutter, don't. Just go for your Geho Sen. You can do the same thing just in case if they do think that you're gonna go for Geho Sen and you wanna be a little bit safer on the frame advantage, try using your other move you can use that's easy to use without having to go into your forward, down, down forward, into two, which is your CD2. You can do your down forward into 2 plus 3. Again, it's slower than the other move, but you can try using this move as well if you want to. So, if again, they know you're going to go for the move, go for this move instead. It's minus 13, they can't launch you, but they'll still get the free hit off of you though. But if you want to try to bait them into something, do that instead. Other things that I don't see players do that they need to be incorporating into their kit is a lot of lows. Again, I just mentioned some of the lows, and this low is your full crush on Ford 4, your best keep out tool. But you don't really see them use down back threes. And the ones that do, don't often even incorporate mix up potential with the move, like in the case of using two hits. Mind you, when using down back threes, only two hits manage to go through the opponents if they do manage to get directly hit by the move. After the third hit, they can block it. And even on hit, they can still block the initial kick that comes right afterwards. But you can use this to your advantage because it's safe on block. So you can do this, go into your no sword stance by holding back on the D-pad or whatever control you're using. Or you can even go into your Indian stance by pressing down 3 plus 4. And if you really want to be funky, you can even go into your Dragonfly stance but it, it is a little bit slower than going into your Indian stance. Or even attempt to go for your Cancho stance. The whole point of this is to try to trick them that you're going to go into something else and not go into your last attack, which is your kick. This kick, specifically. Some will try to even go even so far to go for multiple down back threes. And this can work against the opponent if they're too unsure if you're going to follow up into the last hit, which is your kick, you can also do it while doing the multiple down back threes. And it's still safe on block. But because it's very unsafe afterwards, if they block it at minus 19, they can actually punish you. Or they can just attempt to sidestep. Though it is difficult to do, because you don't know when the Yoshi's going to land the kick. And sometimes they don't even use it, like I just mentioned. Your other spinning weapon move you should be using is your back ones. Back one is only plus one on the first hit on block, but on the second hit on block, it's plus four. So you can use this to your advantage to try to trick them into some of your best moves. Again, you can try using your down forward two to catch them off guard if they may attempt to go for a launcher to try to catch you off guard. They may try to do something along the lines like, let's say if you do two back ones, 
you to try to go for a full crouch. Some characters have built in full crouch attacks that can launch you. And you can use it to your advantage against certain matchups, like let's say for example for Reyna. Reyna likes to do full crouch into down forward 4. I think it's the same motion. And that lands into a counter hit. Uh, or in this case, not really a counter hit, it's a launcher on hit regardless. So you can use this to your advantage and go into down forward 2 and launch the Reyna, attempting to use the move. If you're unsure whether or not if they're going to use something like that, you can just go for your back 1-1s into your CD2. Since it's 14 frames on startup, unlike with the 15 frame startup move of your launcher, of your down forward 2, you'll be slightly faster than them and if they attempt to go for a high, you can duck the high since it's high crushable. But that's not all, you can even go for your down back 3s from it. So you can use that to your advantage as well. One thing that you can also incorporate is your down back twos. Now down back twos has very little use in the center stage and it's mostly used at the wall if you manage to get a wall splat. But it really depends on the situation that you're in that if you can't land the secondary hit, this hit right here, into the follow up one to launch, then try going into your down back twos. But if you want to go for some certain setups with this, you can. If you do your down back twos, you can go into your full crouch and go for a samurai cutter if you want to. Or if you're in your no sword stance, you can go for your full crouch on 4-3. But one thing that I do see Yoshimitsu players do a lot is that when they go for back 2-2, two -two, yes, it's a heat engager, and he has another string that he can use right afterwards with back 2 into 1 but it's very minus on block at minus 17, meaning that he can get launched from this move. But back to 2 is also unsafe at minus 13, so a lot of Yoshis think that when they do this move, they can't get hit, because a lot of the times when you use this move, it has a bit of push block, so they won't get hit by the move. But against certain characters, and depending on how close you are to the opponent, they can punish you with either a 1-1, Let's say in the case of Reyna, she can try punishing you. Or in some cases, they can still punish you because it's minus 13, and some characters have some decently long range 13 frame startup moves. So just because you couldn't get hit before because you're still fighting against, you know, people that are still learning the game, then at the higher ranks, eventually you'll be hit by players that know how to punish this particular string. And the worst of it is that if they know the string in and out, this move can be ducked. So you're just asking to get launched if you do attempt to do this move too many times in a match. Same thing with back 2 into 1. If they know you're going to go for this move, it's minus 17, so you will get launched with this move as well. But if you want to use it to catch the opponent, the opponent off guard, do back 2 at the neutral, pretty far away though at the neutral, and then whiff the back 2 and then go for the 1, but delay the 1. And lots of times players get caught by this particular string. But again, use it at neutral and use it whether or not if they make it close. And if they don't, then you get get you're gonna get launched by this move. For your homing moves, of course you have your forward three and you're voting the puddle up forward four. While you're not in stance, of course, if you're in stance, your best homing moves is your Kencho forward two. And your new current move, which is not really new, but they have given it a new property is your Indian stance into 3 plus 4. It now has homing properties, so you can use this against the opponent off if they tend to, you can catch them off guard with that move if they step you. And I forgot to mention that you also have your full crush on 4 to 4. This move is also amazing, but be mindful that it's your best low move. So the opponent at higher ranks, they kind of understand that you'll use this as a crutch, and I do use this as a crutch a lot. But seeing that lows in this games are just in general harder to basically block unless you have really good reflexes you're going to land this hit often even at higher ranks but try to use this at the neutral don't use it up close unless you're very sure that the opponent is not going to block you and you can even use this to your advantage since now with the new patch you can now go into your indian stance other good moves as well that I forgot to mention is also your down back 1 into 2. Your down back 1 into 2 starts as a low into a mid. 
the last hit is zero on block, meaning that if they retaliate with one of their fastest acting moves, you can use this against them. So for example, if they do attempt to attack you immediately, you can go for CD2 and beat them if they attempt to go for a high move, or even a move that's slightly slow, but it's the attempt to try to launch you. In the case of the new patch, when you're doing your full crush on 4-4 and going into Indian stance by going into 4 again, you can not continue going into your Indian stance if you want. This has potential to go for more mix-up against the opponent if they think that you're going to go for something else while you're in Indian stance. For example, you can do stuff like this. These can actually catch players off guard if they're unsure what's your next approach. But also be careful because this is one of the biggest problems with Yoshimitsu is that a lot of the things that he does in stances can be easily interrupted. So while he's in Indian stance and you're trying to go for any of these moves, besides 3 plus 4 that is, you can get interrupted. So you need to be careful when it comes to that. That's why your best move in Indian stance is going to be your 3 plus 4. Which again is now a homie move, and it's minus 6 on block if it gets blocked. And if they get hit by the move, it's plus 14 if you enter in your dragonfly stance. So this gives you a lot of time to prep and either use your uh, your command grab, or go for your 2, or go for your 1, or whatever it is that you want to use against them if they're respecting you that is. If they're not respecting you then a lot of the times they're just going to go for the 1 and jab you out of the air. So try to go for your 4 to go for your Heat Engager, or go for your Dragonfly 2 to stop them in place. One other thing that I like to use is that when I go for 4 4 4 I use this move a lot in my gameplay, and it's mostly because players don't know how to properly punish it. It can be easily punished with a mid or with a homing move. The reason why is that a lot of the times players, they may make a read that while you're back turn, you may go for your back 3s or back 4s, so you can escape them. Because a lot of moves, depending on the character specifically, if they have a fast acting mid move they can use against you, they can punish you while you're back turned. And it won't even matter if you can go into your back threes or back fours. Or if you want to escape them and they're gonna use a homie move, a lot of homie moves in this game tend to be highs, but there are of course some characters that have really good mid fast acting homie moves you can use. You can try to use this and then just back away by doing down back and you can then create some space away from the opponent. One other thing that I also like to do while if I am in my back turn stance, once I get out of the meditation stance from this angle, I can then try to bait them into other moves as well. For example, if I like to do a lot of the times is this cancel where I go into down one. So if I'm fast enough in canceling out mid, I can do something like this. I can do this. So if they get close enough and they're not going to use, let's say, their running attacks against me, usually some characters have running attacks that have a lot of low crush, like Reyna does. So I won't use this against her because I know she will use a running attack against me. And if they attempt to go for a power crush, I can still beat them since it's a low and catch them off guard. But you can also try to go for other moves, like in the case of your back 2-1. Or your... I think it's your 1-2 if you press forward into 1-2, not that, this move. Because on counter hit, it gives you a launch into a combo. So you, you need to be creative as to how exactly you go about playing with Yoshimitsu. Again, I'm not very creative with Yoshimitsu because he has so many moves. A plethora of moves you have to remember and try to incorporate into your gameplay. And I find more success playing more neutral and playing more fundamentally with Yoshimitsu to win my games. So you will see a lot of me doing this. You see a lot of backpedaling, trying to get away from the opponent. And once I see that they may make a move, I'll then go for either my CD2. I may either try to go for my Kenshin to back to one. I might attempt to go into Poison Breath to, you know, continuously place a lot of keep out against the opponent so they don't get close to me. Using moves like my full crush on Fort 4, and if I'm in my no sword stance, 
I can use stuff like this, try to get close. If I'm with, it's bad, of course, but if I'm close enough, I can then get a launch into a combo. What you're not, whatever it is that you want to go for. One thing that players forget also while they're in those, their snow sword stance is that the final hit can actually go into a follow up string with this. And some don't even know that they have a follow up into Samurai Cutter into two. If you press two, you go into this attack right here. They don't know that. But if you end up whiffing the first hit, or if they block the first hit, but they don't block the second hit, 2-1 is a guaranteed strain. And if you want to, if you want to go into your heating gauger immediately, you can also go into your back 2-2 from this move. Which I don't really do often, solely because of the fact that my playstyle is more playing more resourcefulness, or resourceful, if that makes sense. I will try to be frugal with how I use my heat state. I'll either do it immediately so I can then get access to my strongest moves in my heat state, or I'll try to not use it so I can then use it at a particular moment. So in the end of the day, my playstyle is very revolvent on trying to play neutral, and then when I'm up close, I'll try to play a little bit, a little bit aggressive against the opponent, but I will always try to then catch him off guard with my down forward 4, my down forward 1, full crush on forward 4, and just constantly play patiently until I find myself an opportunity to then use my bigger moves with down forward 2, CD2, Gehelsen, and the like. Of course, my favorite way to try to beat the opponent is to try to backpedal, and then if they get close enough, I'll use my poison breath. But if that ends up failing, then I'll stop and I'll try to go for other moves instead, like going for my 444 to getting close, or try to use my running 3, or constantly going into my Kencho into other moves. Now, with that out of the way, I will explain one other thing too that I figured out while I was playing and trying to get to Tekken Emperor. One amazing trait that I found that if you manage to get the wall, and let's say the opponent is not too fond of getting into the wall, and then they think that you're gonna go for your setup, your usual Samurai Cutter setup. If you do this particular string that I'm about to do, you actually can deal lots of damage to the opponent. As you can see, it does a ton of chip damage. I see this I've seen this particular setup done by Cannon Trench in one of his tournaments and I saw that he did this particular type of setup and I thought to myself, why did he do it? And then I saw that it did lots of chip damage. And the best thing is, is that if you do this particular combo, or any uh, combo for that matter, but then it leaves you in no sword stance, this is safe. So if you do this, you're minus 9, they can still take back their turn, and you can't really flash them to sort of stop them to take off their turn, or take their turn I mean. But at least from that point on, they can't really go for a big punish, because usually if they block it, it's minus 12, so they can go for their 12 frame punish against you. Or you can do stuff like this. If they end up Saito Kimming and they don't end up ducking the Kencho forward 2, they'll get caught by that as well. It's a really decent way of trying to catch them off guard without relying heavily on your Samurai Cutter or your Windmill Unblockable. One other combo you can go for as well, and I like doing this combo if they don't know the setup. If they Saito Kame and they attempt to attack me or they do nothing but they don't hold block, you can do this particular type of setup against them. You can do that. So if they end up Saito Kameing and they want to immediately attack you, this can actually work. Now be careful though that if they know the setup, they can just hold back and you'll end up whiffing the flash and they can launch you. Other things you can try doing as well is that if let's say if you're far away and they don't know how to approach you, but you purposely try to whiff your moves, you can try doing this as well. If you whiff your down forward 3 into your 1, Sometimes they'll try to retaliate by trying to attack you, and you can do that against them. 
but they may just press buttons and try to attack you either way and if they're fast enough they can still hit you out of the move or they may just sidestep away and then you're completely vulnerable to getting launched from the opponent. And now I'm going to show off exactly one of the new things you can do with Yoshimitsu now with the new patch. If he gets a counter hit from full crash on 404, he can do this now. Of course, the last part wasn't really guaranteed, but if they do try to attack you, they can get hit by the follow-up attack. Or you can do this instead. That actually can work, but it really depends on the speed and the angle when you're doing that setup. But again, the combo itself still actually works. So that's about all that I can really showcase with Yoshimitsu. That's all I know for now. At least the bits that I can then try to tell you guys and maybe they can be a bit digestible so that way you don't get too confused. There won't be a lot of other videos that I can really showcase with Yoshimitsu unless you want more guidance videos on how to play Yoshimitsu. I do have a Discord on the description if you want to if you want to get hooked up with more knowledge with more advices there's a lot of players there that are also yoshi mains that know what they're doing and if you also want to if you want any coaching from me then i can also coach you as well though of course you have to pay for the coaching but i still am new to this so i don't know if that's something that you want to really do so if you just want to watch me play on twitch if i do pick up and play yoshimitsu again then at least you know from there thank you guys for watching the video Subscribe to see more of my shit. Hit the notification bells if you want to be notified for any new content that I deliver onto the channel. And stay safe. Stay tuned.